everyone, Jackie Dane here and welcome back to PhD Racing Lab and we're back on the Supra today. Um, small things, a little bit here and there, uh, we're going to work on a little bit of cooling, we got some Mossman Koyo Rad, pretty cool to show you guys. And we're going to start uh, trimming a little bit more weight out of the front of the car especially, so the front bumper is going to come off and we'll have a little bit of DIYs to try and do. And uh, some repairs also, the splitter as you guys saw in VIR. It's literally like too much downforce and push down. Uh, made it a little bit of a rapid departure. Um, so we're gonna kind of try and reinforce it and show you guys exactly what happened. Ready? Uh, we're taking the center grill off. We're gonna trim all of these out and just keep the rest, keep the actual border in it. And as for the actual front of the car, we're taking some of the pieces off already. Like there's this one that kind of supports the bumper emblem, didn't need that, the foam, didn't need that. Uh, this bar is what cracked at the IR. I mean, it's very, very light. It's like a pound and a half or something. But yeah, that that is a that is a gonna. It's on both sides actually. So both this side and the other side cracked. Meanwhile, on this end, the welds actually cracked entirely. So it's on the way out. Um, probably another lap, it would have actually failed big time. So. Four pounds for all of the uh, all of the grill. Um, we're gonna try and trim out as much of these as we can. So like all the you know the actual what's it called the grilly looking part. <laughs> the, the 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> is that a polyhedron? No, it's a, it's a it's a it's just it's a weird square. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Pa I I passed geometry. I swear. I swear. I just can't remember what I they're hope called. For a fourth year end student. Yeah, <laughs> they they're like a double triangle. What's the fucking name for them? Anyway, we're just gonna trim yeah. Out, we're like, we're gonna the trim these there. out and like trim out yeah, the parts that we're not gonna need. Yeah, have. we didn't have any radars on the car, yeah, so the radar mounts are empty. So we trim that. Yeah, we're gonna um, keep all the club everything. So keep everything you know sealed tight. And yes. Fitting nicely. So it it will seal nice, but at the yeah. same time we're gonna like make sure we yeah. trim as much weight out of it as possible because yeah. this is literally as far forward in the car as possible so the more weight you tr we can trim out here the better it's going to help our weight distribution so many hours later it was a long day working on the grill and the bumper uh but the outcome is actually quite nice i quite like it uh we trimmed away the entire grill basically left some of it up top but then when you're like looking at the car normally you wouldn't be able to see it uh this is as craftsman like as I can get it. Now the finish isn't perfect, so I think we cut about 50% of the weight off of these grill while still maintaining a decent chunk of rigidity to the bumper. And by 50%, I mean about two pounds, maybe two and a half to three. Yeah, it's not a lot <laughs> for a whole day's work, um, but it is something. Right, so we've got the new uh, Koyo Rad auxiliary cooler for the A90 Supra. And we're gonna start throwing them in. Uh, we've had a little bit of an issue on this side, but for the other side, for this one, we'll be able to show you exactly how to put it on. So to install, or to uninstall first, these two come off, and this whole thing just rotates outwards, because these are sitting on basically grommets on the radiator support. Ours is slightly trimmed uh, to fit the splitter and the diffuser, but general shape is still here. It's only been 3,000 miles, but it's already a bit Dirty and grimy. Thought this is a new car, Jackie. What did you do? What is that, Rich? Is that just like a little bit of a? These clip? are just retaining clips. Sometimes they get a little jammed up with dirt. Yeah. Make sure you don't lose those. You've got to give it to uh, whoever made this car for, you know, ease of assembly for the cooling system, anyway. Pour out. Yeah. The little rock cover. Just clips right in. Little bit of thread locker, as it is from factory. Now we push it right in. Oh. 
Rich, that's five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> Rich, everybody. Good job. Thank you. We're back in AMS today, everybody. Uh, the intake is already off. We're, we're going to do some more upgrades to the powertrain. Uh, we'll be trying a few more parts that's due in the AMS catalog, including uh, that's getting out. So while we're still waiting on the AMS Garrett Turbo Kit to be ready, uh, that's actually being tested on uh, that car over there. Uh, might have run a 10 already. We'll be trying out this, the Pure 800 stock turbo, stock frame turbo upgrade. Uh, it's got a 3D printed piece for What's this thing called? The inlet side, I believe. And this is the exhaust side with the manifold. Uh, the EGD bungs already are welded up. Uh, it's basically a stock turbo, but with upgraded hardware. Basically all the compressor, I don't know anything about turbos, by the way, but basically it's all upgraded from whatever's in there. Meaning we should be able to make a lot more top end power uh, without actually going with a bigger turbo per se. That's still gonna have some of the heat problems potentially. Uh, we'll be dealing with that in the future and uh, that's why we will still wanna move to a Garrett Turbo in the future. But for now, this will be a very good upgrade and it'll help us bring us to probably the 500 horsepower mark. More carbonified parts from AMS. Uh, ECU cover's coming off. We're gonna put on a carbon fiber ECU cover. Uh, it is a little lighter. We just measured it. It's a quarter pound lighter. It's 0.55 pounds for this, 0 0.30 point pounds for this. Um, it, I mean, it means I can eat another quarter pounder. I can get a double quarter pounder instead of a single quarter pounder in the morning. Then there's this, Ooh, the carbon intake tube. Uh, this is really cool because this is, what they told me was this is a full three inch and it's also modular. So this is basically sized for a stock style turbo. But if I want to go for a Garrett turbo down the line, this, uh, this this section gets changed and the rest is still the same. See, um, my knowledge of turbos is very limited uh, and unfortunately we had to put it in quickly just to plug in the water line, otherwise it was leaking kind of quickly. So, I'll let them work and we just wait for dyno results. Anyway, that's the new new upgraded turbo, uh, mostly just internals. So, cheaty cheaty grid life street class shenanigans, but you know, we're not in street class. We don't have to buy right that. We can switch turbos and I can switch that. Yeah, it was really interesting hearing uh, about electronic wastegates and why AMS is very adamant on us keeping this um, because a normal with a normal uh, wastegate, you'd have to run it based on the vacuum lines. And, you know, it takes a while for vacuum to get from here to here. It needs time. Versus this, you can all control it all by computer data. So you can set just how much you want to bleed it off and it's a very accurate boost control. So it's overall just a nicer thing to do, right? Um, so I think we'd like to keep this, which is what AMS is doing on their turbo kit as well. So let's wait for that. making a solid 560 horsepower basically these runs versus okay first you have the stock one which is here which made about 340 and you know 404 pounds of torque which is not bad and then we have the tuned version that goes here and here uh this is that was the coda trim circuit of the america trims where we won super lap battle that made around 450 horsepower and right on 520 foot pounds of torque so now we go to a new turbo uh, obviously the lag is that there is a little bit more spool time uh, just because it is even though it's a stock frame turbo it is bigger so it's basically delayed by about 800 rpm to actual spool up but instead of dropping off the way this one did with the curve to curve this one is a lot more gradual and the drop off is a lot smaller too um, so we lose a little bit here but honestly from 2000 to 3000 rpm are we going to be using that on a race track most likely not you might need it in the street driving scenario that might be something for you to think about but for me, this area is what I'm looking at. So ignore everything under three. Um, look at this. This is just a torque, okay? Torque here is a big gain. And then you have the power gain, which really comes into effect at four. It right, basically just about matches it here. And whereas the stock turbo runs at a puff at around 450, and by the time you get to five and a, five and a quarter, it's peaked 
and it's trailing down to 400 horsepower. Now, we're picking all the way up. This is 50 horsepower right here, where it used to be peak. We're getting more than 50 horsepower, and this is about 75. Here, this is going down. This is keeping maintaining at 550, over 550. And this is, this is dropping to 400 by, six, by 60, 750. This maintains to basically seven grand all across at 550 rpm this horse this area right here this area right here right here is absolutely gigantic it's actually if you look at it it's bigger than the gain we got compared to at least from here to here it's bigger uh oh, oh it's all gone it's it's generally genuinely really freaking amazing i'm shocked i will ask for a file from them later on but to be honest with you i don't actually know how to drive this car anymore because did the car ever feel slow with 450 horsepower? Did it really? Did it feel slow? No, never, never would I have said, oh, this car feels slow. And they just given me 150 more horsepower at peak, at, at redline. It's easily over 100 at peak. That's about 110 over the stock one at peak power, peak versus peak, but the peaks are different. So at redline, we have over 150 horsepower more than before. What? <laughs> Um, it's kind of wild. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, AMS. Uh, there's a shout out, pure. That that thing seems to work pretty well. We're gonna really be able to test that on a racetrack. Uh, I've been told there might be some concerns with with the fuel pump not being able to keep up uh, when, especially maybe when the temperature gets hot and the car is trying to reach itself out a little bit. To, I've, been, I've been told to watch out for that. So. Uh, we will. We'll be data logging with our new Ecutech dongle, which I'll show you in a little bit. But is she gonna go faster? Yes. How much faster? I don't know. But a lot faster, <laughs> judging from the graph. I mean, stock. Okay, stock. Turn tune with a t uh, with a tune with downpipe. Tune with a pure eight hundred, and a downpipe. That's not, that's not even funny. That, that's not even funny. This is, you know, this is about 100 horsepower here. And you know, by here is about maybe 100, you know, it's, it's still these, oh, oh wait, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong line. This, about 75 horsepower at red line. This, it's about 150 horsepower at red line. <laughs> <laughs>